Hey guys, welcome back to Thorough Capping. Um, this is Dave. I wanted to put this video together really in response to um, a few emails that I got. I got a, actually a, a very positive email uh, the other day from a viewer, or I don't, not necessarily, I don't know if it was a viewer or not, but somebody who purchased a Thorough Capping system and had some pretty good results uh, the other day with it. And But one of the questions, one of his inquiries were, is there any way to scale it down a bit where it doesn't take so much time to to handicap the races? And I know I said in the beginning that, you know, it's going to take time. This is not something you can wake up in the morning and um, do a full card in a couple hours before the race goes off, first race goes off. Um, but the answer is yes, okay? And when I put when I put out this this tutorial... I had a lot of things in mind as far as additions, not only to additions to the tutorial itself or addendums, if you want to call them, but also to the grids. Okay. If you notice your grids in the Google Sheets have the tabs on the bottom, I can add those tabs as often as I want to if I want to put a new type of grid on there and then let everybody know here through video that there's a new grid and show you how to use it and show what kind of content and factors go on to it. And then you're able to go into your thorough, thorough capping tutorial and click download grid, and then you'll have access to that brand new grid once you make a copy of it. So I also have, I also got a few more, I think, comments in some of the videos saying that uh, looks like there's a lot of validity to, the, to this, but again, it looks like it's very time consuming. And again, I'm not saying it isn't, I, I agree. But I had mentioned before that there's no better reward than doing your own work and coming out on top and having a good day. You're not going to win every day, but coming out and being successful um, and having your work, your hard work that you put in, your grinding to, to show for it. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you the new grid first. This is our new grid. And let me show you a version that's already uh, filled out somewhat. This is filled out. I started doing Gulfstream Park for tomorrow, 714. And this is what the grid looks like. And let me just show you some of the factors on the grid. What I did was I went a little more matrix system heavy in this grid and less um, velocity, pace figure, SART and methodology. Um, I went less heavy there. Because that seems to be the most time-consuming part. I know on my end it is, especially when I'm um, evaluating 10, 8 to 10 races and I'm doing every, every runner. You know, it takes, it takes a lot of time. The matrix system factors, the target and ability, I left on this grid. But I took out the target and ability average. Okay, the TA average that's on the original grid. I took that out. Um, I added the target buyer, which I'm going to show you in a second. I'm not going to, this is not a how-to video. This is a more or less, a, a look what I have here video. And just to, for you guys to get an idea of what you think it would do to cut your time down, but yet not water down the factors that you're looking at. Okay, so this first section over here, we have the target, the ability, the target buyer, the final fraction, okay, the final fraction of the race, and what I call the speed figure cumulative, and in the matrix system, I call it the buyer cumulative, because at the time when I made the matrix system tutorial, I was diehard uh, daily racing for them, and I was using the buyers, but now I'm 50-50, I'm 75, 75, 25, uh, Brisnet, over DRF and so I call it the speed figure cumulative and I'll just give you a quick rundown on that but again the matrix system tutorial shows how to calculate these three two, three new factors okay the thorough capping does not the thorough capping gets into the target and ability but if you remember as I mentioned before if you have your thorough capping grids 
There is a note right on the right on the, the first chart. It says, email me at thoroughcapping at gmail.com if you are interested in a complimentary copy of Follow the Figures and the Matrix system. Okay, so they're there for you. If you what what you'll do if, if I get an email from you, all I gotta do is I'll I'll check and see that that's the email. Make sure you use the email that you used when you purchased the thorough uh, thorough capping tutorial. That way I can match it up and I can send it send it right away to you. Okay. Um, the speed figure cumulative is also taken from the follow the figures as well. That's one of the one one or two of the techniques that's used in there. All right, but that's I've scaled that down and I'm just using the one uh, particular factor here. Then over here we have our qualitative scan. Now this is what's going to cut down the time from before. When we do our qualitative scan, we are looking to eliminate any horse does not that does not have one of these factors. Does not show a turn move in its one of its last two races. Okay, we're using the last race or the one race back if it was recent enough. A stretch move coming out of a key race, coming out of a race where there was a next out winner in the top three where this particular horse was within a distance, a decent distance from that next out winner. A class drop, a trainer note, or what you presume to be the early speed of the race, the race, the horse that's going to get in the front, just by eyeballing the 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 what do you call it, the past performance itself. Those are the only horses. That's phase one of your elimination process. Okay, there's two phases. This is phase one, and I'm going to go to a race right now and just show you, get an idea. I'm going to go. I'm going to pull up Golfstream race eight tomorrow, and we're looking for those factors and I don't have the chart so you know I, I have these factors memorized so I'll just walk you through them I'm looking for a turn move in one of the last two there's one right there there's a slight one okay and in the elimination process all I'm looking for is one length or more okay to move this horse on to the next uh, the next phase if you want to call it okay we have a turn move I'm looking for a trainer note that's 18% or better a trainer note that I I prefer to use um, you guys may differ you may look at this all-weather stat on the all-weather track and say I like to use that go for it use it okay I don't use the trainer notes for the distance or for the surface okay I look more for the unique such as you know second after the claim third after claim uh, first off layoff second off layoff sprint to route route to sprint and so forth um, or else you get pretty much every horse uh, registering and qualifying for this phase now we go to number two I see one length gain there and I see actually four and a half lengths gain there that's an actual that is an actual turn move, but it's two back. Okay. I see a one length, actually half a length stretch move. Nothing there. Nothing there. No class drop. Okay. Um, the exception to the to, to the rule is if the horse was in the lead, that counts as well. And then, of course, you can make your own judgment, too. If, if a horse is doesn't make the gain, but yet is close enough to the pace, you know, you may want to include that as well, okay? But, I mean, at the same time, we're not looking to cut our throat here by uh, eliminating horses that we could potentially, should potentially move on to the next phase. But at the same time, we're not looking to be, you know, uh, most generous here and just take anybody just for whatever. And that's what the beauty of handicapping is. I may have eliminated a horse, and you may have kept it. And you may have made the better decision to keep the horse because there's something that you saw uh, in, in the race. Um, here we have a, an actual turn move that I will label on the grid once we get to that point. 
And if, when I see a turn move, once again, the first thing I check for is, is there a comment over here about the horse being wide on the turn? All right. Um, trainer factors, nothing above. I'm looking for 18% or better on, okay, win last, winner last out. That's one of the things that I look for that I like. I see 22% there. I'm going to make a note of that. Okay, see now, there's no gain here, but this might be enough for me to say, hey, you know what, I might as well just move this horse on to the next step because of being, you know, one length off the pace and one and a quarter length off the pace at the second call. Um, non graded today, second off layoffs, 15%, all weather, I don't look at that. The six horse, again, I mean, there's a length gain right there, so that works. And there's a two-length gain. That works. Okay. Now, this turn move and stretch move um, ideology here is, is something that I picked up from Jim Lahane's Calibration Handicapping, which I purchased a long time ago. And in his, what he calls the red scan technique, and he calls it the red scan because he says, you know, he likes to use the red pen. Because red, red pens stand out. Uh, those are two of his factors that he looks for. He looks for the turn move and stretch move. And then I look for I look for those two plus my additionals that I'm talking about. Um, I think he ignores class drops and everything. But uh, we have a length gained here. And that's it. Nothing trainer-wise. Winner, winner last out again, 22%. Anything over here? Anything over here? So it looks to me like this particular race, all seven. Oh, actually, there's eight, nine. Oh, sorry, ten. Whoa. Okay, maybe we can find one we can eliminate. All right. We don't want to eliminate this horse here. Even though it's a 12 5 maiden going into a non graded stakes, I want to at least move it on to the second phase. 30 to 1 morning line, I know. Um, I, probably, I probably should just toss. But we are looking at a turn move here, too, as well. We don't know what type of horse we're going to have coming back off that race. So I want to keep that just for the sake of taking a look at. We'll see what it looks like. Okay, we got close to the pace here on a class drop coming off graded stakes. And then we actually have a stretch move here. Again, two back as well. And we have a turn move here. Uh, 90 plus days away. I'll take that stat. Turf to all weather. Nah. I think this horse is qualified with enough anyway. And then we have a one length gain here. And this particular race, you're going to find that a horse like this, uh, a race like this, you're going to get most, if not all the horses qualify at the thing by the things that we're looking for simply because of the level of the race. This is a non-graded stakes. This is not a you know $10,000 claimer or $7,500 claimer. So what we have here is we have all these horses moving on to the next phase. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift gears and I'm going to show you my chart again and I'm going to go back to race number one. Now race number one is already completed. And in that race, I was able to actually eliminate horses. So our focus race from here on out is going to be the one horse, the one race one, because I have it finished on my grid. Now, if you look at the two horse, the two horse does not meet any of those uh, qualifications. There's no class drop here. She's running 12-5 main claiming. Nothing over here. No next out winners. Uh, not coming out of a key race, uh, nothing trainer-wise that I want that stands out. Nothing moves in the race. Okay, we actually lost the length here, and we lost a ton of lengths here. Lost a half a length here, and lost a length and a quarter there. So that horse was a toss. The three horse, same thing. Okay, I tossed the three. Now I looked at this and I said, okay, we have a six and a quarter down to five, but really 
when I know ahead of time the other factors that I'm going to be looking for already, I know that this horse is going to probably not qualify past the second rank ranking. So I tossed him there. The three is out. The seven. And the eight, I actually ended up keeping the eight, even though I tossed him. But I kept the eight simply because of the class. And, and the reason why I, have, I, I tossed it out in the beginning, because I was looking over here and I see three, six and a half furlong races. And this is a uh, mile and sixteenths. And I, so I know when I throw this horse on the pace grid and I start pulling these velocity numbers, it's going to be above and beyond the other runners. So I just made a note that, you know what, I, I marked down the, the class drop on the sheet. I marked down the, uh, that's it, the, actually the, cla the, the, cla the, the, the class drop. And this will be one of the horses, if I play an exotic in this race, the eight's going to be a horse that I'm going to use. Okay, simple as that. So what I did was, I, when you go to your grid now, you do a split screen. And after I've done all my figuring, let me split screen here. And again, I said before, this is not a how-to video. So if you're asking me, how did you come up with this number and how did you come up with that number? That's all in the tutorials. Okay. Um, I got a 68 target. Now, on the old grids, I would have to type 68. I'd have to type an 80 in for the ability and then move on to the next horse and type everything. I don't have to do that. Everything is done on the past performances uh, using this methodology. And all I'm doing is I'm looking for the highest number here for target that doesn't exceed the ability number. So we have a 68. We have a 77, 79, a 68, 67. So really that would be a 67. Again, the concept of exceeding, we bring the target back down to the ability. That would be a 67, 67. And then the eight horse, I didn't pull a target rating off of the eight horse either. And when it's all done, we have the five horse is the 77. So what I'm doing is I'm typing in under the target, who is my target horse? My target horse is the five. Okay, and then what I do here is if there's anything within two points close in range, I include that horse as well. So there's a 77. I'm looking for anybody w within a 75 to a 77. There is none. Now the ability, the 80, you can trust me on this. I don't have to go down and look at all of them. The 80 was my top ability. And there was nobody within two of that, so it becomes a one. Now my target buyer, again, is the target rating. And again, I, I have it the target buyer. It should be target speed ratings or target briz. So we'll keep it as TB, target buyer, if you're using DRF, TB, target briz, if you're using brisnet. Okay, but what it is, it's a sum of your target rating plus the speed figure of the race that you use to get your target rating. Okay, so um, this was a 137. I used this last race. Okay, this race in yellow here is because this is where I drew the pace line from for the velocity. But I used the last race. I didn't have any reason to not use the last race. There was no comment saying he stumbled at the start or whatever to move back. So again, I got to be honest as, as honest as I can when I'm doing this. So we have a 68 and a 69 came out to 137 for a target rating our target buyer and when I compare all these the six was the best with the 138 and the one was the second best with 137 again within two points so that's why I have six dash dash one to know that they were close okay the final fraction was 25 seconds for the one and if you look at the rest of them 25-3, 25-2. The six horse should actually be there too. And that was it. And again, this the final fraction. Um, in both the matrix system, there's a about seven or eight slides that really, really go in depth on how to figure out the final fraction, how to calculate it. Uh, um, and the same goes for the target buyer. 
which I really just showed you. If you know how to do the target rating, you know how to do the target uh, buyer or target briz. And then finally, the buyer, the, 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 the speed figure cumulative. What I do here is I take the last, the best figure on today's distance or today's surface, which is the all weather track, 82, and add it to the distance. And then I do the same for best on a year, last out. And I add them two sums together, and I come out with 309. Uh, what I did here, I think I used the turf number. Yeah, that's why I got the 163. I used all-weather turf. I probably should have used all-weather, and uh, and I should have, not probably. I should have had a 159 over here. So this is actually 159, should be four points less. This should be a 30, 305, but 305 I still think is the top number, 291, 280. Yeah, so the one horse gets the check mark for the speed cumulative. Okay, so I have all my qualitative feet, or factors identified. The five was a turn move horse in this race. We'll take a look at it. Okay. Was it wide? And again, when I'm looking for these, I'm looking for last race out. Okay. Not two races. Because you may be thinking, well, if all of these horses qualified for the first round, they're going to qualify for the second round, too. Not so much. Okay, because you can have a horse that made a stretch move, two back, but he's not going to be identified here. He made a stretch move, two back, which qualified him for the next phase, which is the calculation phase. But he doesn't qualify past the second phase if he didn't appear somewhere in these numbers here. Okay? So what we have is we have the class drop on the eight, which I'm going to move him on to the next. And then we have a um, the trainer trainer note, or trainer rating, we'll call it, uh, the five. And then the six horse was my projected early speed, simply off of the race here on May, May 14th, where he had the clear lead. He actually almost wired there. And the best, it was a 49.4. Nobody else showed that. So, <clears throat> if you look here, the 1, 5, 6, and the 8 are the horses that qualify for uh, the next phase, which is the, the velocity figures. So now, we just lighten the load even more because there's only four horses now we got to do the pace figures on. And what I did was I did the pace figures and... Okay, we did the pace figures on just those four horses, one, five, six, eight. I made a note that the eight horse was the horse that was coming out of sprints, but yet he was a class drop. Again, that's one of the intangibles that we talked about, that if I had three or four horses like this in this race, I'd move on. I'm not going to play the race. And once we're done, all we're worried about is this section over here, okay, for this particular grid. And the six is just... You know, a standout in the EP, early pace, sustained pace, and average overall pace. And therefore, that is why we have the six in all three of those categories. And then from that point, all we're going to do is we're going to evaluate. And we're going to figure out how do we want to rank um, when tomorrow comes. Any of these horses at a good a good price is worth a win bet, in my opinion. Because they all show factors or characteristics that uh, show that they can win the race. We got the five as a target horse. Target horse coming off a turn move with a trainer note. We have the six dominating the velocity figures off the pace line. We have the one horse ability, second in target buyer, top final fraction, top cumulative. But what I did was I just put a 1568 here as my four contenders and then move on. 
Now, if you notice, race three, four, five, and six, I've completed phase one, elimination one, and then I've done two. So if we look at race three, <clears throat> the one, two, three, four, and five all move on, okay, simply because they're making an appearance. Even though the one looks dominant, I'm going to all give them the I'm going to give them all the benefit of the doubt. Run the pace lines. Uh, who knows? You might have the one show up in three of the four, but yet the other category, overall pace, you might find um, the two horse, which maybe would now force me to move that two up in ranking a little bit from before. So that's pretty much it. That's the alternative grid. Um, a lot of the same factors, yet new factors as well. And that was my goal uh, with thorough capping was to make it as much as plug and play, much plug and play as possible, where it's not set in stone where you have to use only these factors. What we did was we broadened the, the grid now, and we've added some more factors from the matrix system, and one factor from the follow the figure system. Uh, those that are avid users of either of those systems, there are a few other factors that you could tie in if you want to. You can take out what you want to take out. And you can add more qualitative stuff that you look for, whatever you're looking for. But I think you're going to find that this grid is a lot more user-friendly, especially on the screen as well. Because all you're doing is you're simply putting down the horse instead of every single horse in the race having to type in the numbers for them. Okay, so it's going to cut down the data entry. 99% uh, of your work, I shouldn't say 99, but 95% of your work or 90% is going to be done on the past performance themselves. All right, so hit me up with any comments, questions you may have. Uh, again, if you have access to thorough, thorough capping and you purchased it, just shoot me an email. If you haven't done so already, I will send you the matrix system tutorial and the follow the figures tutorial free of charge. Uh, these new grids, I am uh, I already put the tab on there, so if you want to just download the grids again, Make a copy. You'll have access to these charts as well. All right. Thanks for viewing. Looking forward to your comments. And I might have another video on this particular grid as well.